Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Margin Starcraft. Please excuse my voice, I know it's rugged. And we start off this game by having an observer leave. So this match is going to be a Protoss versus a Protoss versus Terran and I showed them vice versa. The Pro the <laughs> Terran will be played by Hiei uh, hey, while while Cheese will be playing our Protoss. Again, excuse my voice and excuse my lack of concentration. I am sick. But let's continue this game. So far, both these players, if you don't know, they are uh, really good players. So we're probably going to see a, hopefully, a very, very good match. We'll see how this actually turns out. We have a supply depot going down on standard time for hay, so nothing uh, out of the ordinary there. Same with the pylon, no scouting probes. So we'll see if anything. Ah, oh God. I guess I feel so bad. If anything should come up really fast, but I sincerely doubt it. Uh, no early guess for hay, so. Clearly nothing really strange. We're probably gonna see the barracks down soon, and there it is, that 12 racks. Cheese getting his gateway at 13 probe, and finally sending out his scout to see what what is and what isn't on the map. Sadly, I think he's heading. No, he might actually head to the right direction and uh, scout Hay first, while Hay's scout, on the other hand, is going to check where is it oh sadly for him it's going he's going to check here and not be able to scout we'll see if that matters and if uh, cheese will be able to take advantage of the delayed scouting time now this probe is finally gonna run in here and start to probably do some harass as all good protoss players do with probes apparently he's gonna just take some minerals and walk away yes or not. The marine will soon be out to take care of this probe and we have a second supply depot and the probe is just idling around with a face full of minerals. The marine is out, the probe goes back, nothing out of the ordinary there and apparently the SCV, whoa, even a bigger delay because he's going to check out down here instead of going up here, sad sadly. Let's see what else is this barracks producing. Nothing much. We have a marine on the way and a zealot and a cybernetics core and a tech lab. So maybe we'll have a few marauders on defense. The mule is already here from this orbital command. And cheese is getting warp gate technology. I gotta say, speaking of cheese, I've discovered at my own expense, sadly, that low level players do nothing but cheese. They have no idea how to play macro, they just do cheese over cheese over cheese over cheese. A high end, a macro game to them is probably like kryptonite. And I understand why, because they can't handle the multitasking. This includes me. I can't handle the multitasking, but hell, I try. I try to play a macro game. The stalker is out and is going to destroy this scouting SCV, so this is in a little advantage for Cheese as his scouting probe is just going to stay here and watch out for any early push. We'll see if these two marines and this marauder will be will be able to do some damage, but I doubt it unless the stalker will run into them. The Zalnaga Tower will spot these things, but and it finally this probe will go down once these marines head into the bush that sounded bad we have a command center on the way so we'll see an early expansion from the terran the zerg has the protoss has already started securing his and similar build times the protoss will be up earlier we'll see if he's gonna actually have that much of an advantage depends on this uh, command center actually morphing into an orbital command if it does morph then that means that the protoss will have a bigger ex uh, bigger time on the mineral line meanwhile in the middle of the map we have an scv gonna run into these two stalkers and a zealot and the reaper the reaper is gonna go down and oh flying up and flying into the abyss and i think that these marines and Mar marauder can't fight this they should really back out but still even so the stalkers are going to be able to catch up and take him out so he decides to sacrifice them in the meantime pumping out units where is this scv going where is it getting a bunker here 
if this bunker gets done he will be able to hold off any attack for a while but the attack is not going to happen just gonna stand here and scout and build for the macro play meanwhile the production tab says we have another barracks on the way stim is being researched and a robotics facility so we might see just the observers or we might see Colossus on the map, which I really want to see because I've only seen Colossus in that Protoss versus Protoss I cast it a while back and haven't really seen them use effectively ever since. Why the hell is keep, my computer keeps freezing? I have no idea. So we have the expansion getting slowly saturated. If we look at the income tab, the Protoss is slightly ahead, but now finally the command center is here. Will be, let's see, will he upgrade it? I think so, because he's not producing anything, and yes, orbital command on the way, so transferring SCVs, a few of them, so we'll see the income even out pretty pretty soon or even to get an advantage for the turn because of those mules meanwhile we have five racks on the way five racks or four racks no it's a four racks and a factory we'll see if the fifth racks is down where is this scv going to take out this Selnaga tower so we have opposite towers one being taken by an scv while one is being taken by a stalker we have this lonely marine guarding his rocks here. I'm sure that if a giant Protoss ball decides to come in here, this marine is gonna go, THESE MEN ARE MINE! But that's not gonna work for him. We have a Twilight Council, so sadly the robotics facility only warped in probably a few observers. I... somewhere. Uh, an observer to go with the army. Well, Twilight Council will be used f for upgrades. No Templar archives on the way, so no Templar. <laughs> but now the Twilight Council is here, we'll see what upgrades he decides to go. Will it be Zalot Legs or Blink? And Templar archives is on the way, so apparently this was only for our Templar archives, so we'll, we, we will see Storm against the bio build. But it's not that big of a bio build just only a few marines a few marauders more so than marines marauders are a lot more robust and we have the transitioning starport into the reactor that was built by the factory and we're gonna have two medevacs so this bio ball is going to get bigger so apparently poor poor uh, hey is in a bad position right now because he is about to get storm in his face Meanwhile, the observer is scouting and seeing that this is a big ball of meat ready to take the electrical storm in its face. We have one, two, three more gateways on the way and a immortal. Back on the production tab, we have storm on the way and zealot legs. So zealots will be able to charge up and deal with any kind of problems. Chrono boost not being used. I suppose it could, he could probably use it. Oh no, he actually is using it on these upgrades, which is good. One expansion is full on the Chrono Boost, and the Terran is deciding to move out. Will we have enough uh, Templars by the time this army gets here? We have one Templar, sadly. Let's check out the units. We have uh, one Templar, one High Templar, and we'll see if that High Templar will be, will be able to hold it. We have a probe here, probably soon going to lay down an expansion, a pylon, and a pylon for scouting purposes, and here is the Terran Ball, while the Observer just idling above it. And the turn ball decides to move back. I don't think that that's a good idea because if you would have moved in, I don't know if you would have won, but at least he would have prevented the High Templars from having Psionic Storm, and that would have been to his advantage. Meanwhile, the unit lost is favoring Cheese because of those Marines and Marauders that he lost on the way. And pretty much we have Caldarian amulets, so making sure that new and improved Templars will have enough for more storms. This observer just walking around, keeping an eye on this army. And this army is going to take on a pylon, not really a big of a deal. If we look at the army size, we have the Protoss in a slight advantage, 124 over 121. I don't think that that will matter in a actual combat because of the medevacs. But we'll see how this turns out. We have, oh, very, very, very sneaky, very sneaky. Thank you, Mr. Observer on the map. We have the a nice drop coming out here. And will this drop be able to do some damage? There are no defenses and the Protoss is moving out. The Protoss will probably engage this. And if he does, and if he does, Stim is being used. So let's see this engagement going down. Very nice. The... Uh, 
force of the force fields here gonna stop the army from running away but most of it has run away but the drum uh, the drum drop is happening taking out all these probes yes i've seen it thank you observer even though this large army has fallen the economical damage is huge if these uh, marauders decide to stim and they are stim up and they're gonna take out the nexus that will be a huge economical drop for our protoss player let's look at that income deterrent is a clear advantage let's see the now this army have engaged one another just running away i think that right now the best thing he could do is load up the medevacs because he has only a few stalkers and those won't, aren't going to do a lot of damage and then he and the Terran army is going to force the cancel of this nexus while the drop is still doing a lot of damage taking out a production facility taking out probes taking out pylons and oh three warp gates just being taken out there and a assimilator and the, the drop just loads up and runs away because as i said there are very very few stalkers and they won't be able to do anything now he d does decide to attack these rocks so he might be able to he might try to do a run in inside this base but i suppose that by that time the terran should be able to have enough of a strong defense to hold this off meanwhile we have the drop just pulling back and bringing back all these all the army we'll see if a if the templars will be able to use feedback on the dropships and maybe can get off their heels now this is nice because the rocks are acting as a tank while the terran army is sl slowly but surely softening up the problem we have a viking here forced to land because nothing else he can do storms coming down on the bio ball the bio ball stims away tries to run away tries to macro away these are a lot of zealots even though marauders are pretty very good against uh, gateway units these are a lot of zealots we have archons trying to uh, use the templars that he's lost medifax go down and we have inside the base another drop here going to try and take out even more of cheese's economy but cheese is really having a gigantic army inside poor hayes base we'll see what this happens i don't know who to favor right now the medivac is going to go down because of this archon and all the marauders are dead all the army is dead i think he only has eight marauders somewhere on the map i suppose these are the ones and a few marines three medevacs and his entire main base is pretty much sacrificed he's not doing anything i suppose he should be uh, and he just ggs out and that's it strangely enough he ggs out i don't think that he would have probably won at this point because we have a void prism here so these gateways will would have been used to warp in a lot of units a lot of stalkers so poor he wouldn't have had ha wouldn't have had a place to hide but it was a very nice game we've seen effective use of drops but sadly it just wasn't enough so congratulations to cheese and i will see you guys next episode hopefully that by that time my voice would have cleared up thank you and goodbye